Hello everybody, this is Gregory with the Cinema Rank. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to talk about Elizabeth Banks and why was she not a bigger actress. Now before we begin, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so these episodes come fresh to you and post a comment because most of you guys know who Elizabeth Banks is. Elizabeth Banks, there are things that I do like about her. In fact, I would say on a, a perusal of her life, Similar to what my erstwhile co-host May and I used to do when we would do Whose Life Would You Rather Be, that actor versus actor series. We probably have 15 of those. Go check out the back catalog. Those are podcast form, but we have like Christian Bale versus DiCaprio, Emma Stone versus Scarlett Johansson, Damon versus Affleck. Uh, if you look at Banks, there's a lot of things I like about her. She's been married to the same guy, Max Handelman. He was a sports writer. Uh, up in the Pacific Northwest, they they started dating her first year in college, and they've been together since then. They have two children. They were born versus during surrogacy or by surrogacy. So I don't know if Banks maybe had fertility problems or she just didn't want to carry her own children. Either way, it is refreshing. And I've talked about it in my Sexy Saturday podcast series how I really respect women who aren't you know riding the carousel of you know what and they stick with a guy and even after they get big and famous they still stick with the guy so it's good to see somebody a hollywood actress who's been with the same guy since she was in college you know and they seem to have a pretty quiet family and you can say the same thing with the actors look at christian bale christian bale has been with her with uh, his wife uh, and they live a very quiet life in europe and they have a family together you don't ever hear christian bale in in salacious tabloids or anything like that so it's it's just refreshing to hear that so either way banks banks is 50 years old her actual birth name is elizabeth mitchell but she couldn't use that name because it was elizabeth mitchell if you've ever seen uh lost uh she, she's the blonde in the tv show lost uh, so she had to take on a new stage name and she took on elizabeth banks and Pretty normal upbringing, uh, nothing special, nothing big. And then she started to get small roles. Wet Hot American Summer is kind of a cult classic. I'm not a big fan of this movie, but you look, Bradley Cooper got his star. The Amy Poehler's in this. You look at um, a bunch of other like young actors and actresses were in this. And that she was in that movie. But really, I would say she was in a lot of small roles. She had small roles in Spider-Man 2 and 3 with Sam Raimi. But really, it was 40-year-old virgin where she kind of got her break. And that's where she got her entree into the R-rated comedies. So if you haven't seen 40-year-old virgin in some time, she's got that small role as the woman who works at the bookstore where Steve Carell goes in there. Because I think it was Rudd tells her or the, or the black guy tells her, just repeat everything they say back. So Carell goes in there and just repeats everything she says. And then she gets really turned on by it. And then later on, uh, hijinks ensue at her, her place. So she's kind of the horn dog. And then if you look at that, she goes on a nice little run. And that's 2004. So we'll do some of the highlights of some of her most famous movies during this time. So you got... Invincible, the Mark Wahlberg movie that takes place in the 70s where he tries out for the Eagles. She's the love interest. And you'll notice she's the love interest in a lot of these movies, by the way. 2008, definitely, maybe. I think this is like a Hall of Fame of hot women. If you haven't seen this rom-com, it's, it's Ryan Reynolds. And he's telling his daughter the story about how he met their mom. And so he, it, it, you don't know until the end who the mom is, but look at the choice. Sexy Saturday, Ella Fisher. Sexy Saturday, Rachel Weisz or Elizabeth Banks. You know, and so all these women are at their peak beauty at this time in 2008. It's a cute little rom-com. In that year, she also does W. She plays Laura Bush as W in that movie about George W. Bush. She also does, in that movie, I don't, I don't think it was that good. It's Oliver Stone's uh, take on it. I think Vice is a much better take on that period. Uh, the Adam McKay movie with um, Christian Bale. Zach and Mary make a porno. That's 2008. Also, Role Models is 2008. I tend to like that movie. That's a Paul Red movie uh, where they have to go play with the little kids. It's, it's, it's just a great movie. And she, of course, plays the love interest in that. Then she does the horror movie The Uninvited in 2009. Then here and there, she does like smaller movies like Our Idiot Brother. She's actually done a lot of movies with Paul Rudd and with Tobey Maguire. She's done five movies with Tobey Maguire and four movies with Paul Rudd. So you kind of, they kind of hang out in the same circle. So you see around 2012, she starts to make a pivot. And this is where she becomes more well-known to the regular folk. So she does Hunger Games. She plays Effie Trinket. And I believe she's in all the Hunger Games movies. Uh, Effie Trinket's like the chaperone for the District 12 kids. 
So she uh, is the one that's watching over Katniss, who's played, of course, by Jennifer Lawrence. So she does those movies. She goes on the run of Hunger Games in 2012. She also does What to Expect When You're Expecting, which is a really bad pregnancy movie. Then she does Pitch Perfect, and she plays one of the the uh, like the comment the commentators on Pitch Perfect. And this is where she starts uh, her her expansion into her directorial work. So Pitch Perfect Two. Um, she directs. Now, I would t- we'll talk about her directing in a second. I would say her directing has not been the best, but again, she's branching out. She creates a production company. She realizes this is 2012, so she's already 38-ish. She's like, you know, she sees the tea leaves. Maybe she's not getting all the roles that she wants, and it's not like she's been getting really good roles. She's either getting like the girlfriend role or, or cameos. And, and we're not going to mention her TV work, but her TV work's pretty prolific. She does a lot of cameos on different comedies, mostly comedies. So she's realizing, you know, I, I got to branch out and maybe she's always had a penchant for directing. So she starts to direct with Pitch Perfect too. So she's in that movie. So now she's in two franchises. She's doing Hunger Games and she's doing Pitch Perfect, which are both very big franchises, especially for young women. So this is where she becomes much more famous to, uh, I guess, the, the general middle America crowd. Uh, they might not know her name, but they would recognize her face. And so she does that. She gets a lot of good credit for doing Love and Mercy. Love and Mercy is about Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys. That comes out in 2014. And then she's in Magic Mike XXL. So, you know, she does a nice little run. You look at 2012 Hunger Games and Pitch Perfect. 2013 Hunger Games Catching Fire. 2014 Hunger Games again. 2015 Pitch Perfect 2. She directs that. She's in Magic Mike as well. She's also in Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. She goes on a nice little run. 2017, Pitch Perfect 3. So in the mid-teens, she's going on a nice little run. And then her acting starts to abate and she starts to direct. And I would just want to comment on a couple of movies she directs. So she directs uh, Pitch Perfect 2 and then she does Charlie's Angels. And the Charlie's Angels reboot is just horrifically bad. It's just so bad. It's got Kristen Stewart, who we talked about uh, recently about her her photo shoot, how it, maybe it's not going to help her career, but it it it's she's the lead, and in this movie Elizabeth Banks, who's directing it, also plays the the new Bosley, uh, and just does not work. And then later on, she does kind of get like a rebound. She does Cocaine Bear last year, and Cocaine Bear actually made a lot of money. And I, I guess it kind of reminds you. Guys, simple premise. Just come up with a simple premise. The title tells you what the movie's about, and it could be stupid. Kind of like horror movies, right? If you make them for a low budget, and the premise is really like a one-sentence pitch, it's going to work. So who doesn't want to see a bear that's on cocaine? So Cocaine Bear did well. Now, did it do well because of Elizabeth Banks' amazing directorial work? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know about that. But either way, she should get credit for it. So that's Elizabeth Banks. So, you know, why didn't she get more credit? Why didn't she have a bigger career? Well, I think it's a couple of things. I think that, A, she kind of got her break late. So if you look at uh, her, her her big break, I suppose it'd be 40-year-old version. She's already in her late 20s. But, you know, to be fair, Anna de Armas didn't get her big break until around that time with uh, with Knives Out. I think just, you know, Elizabeth Banks is, is, is cute, but not, like, outrageously beautiful at her peak. And... She just had limited acting range, and I think that's really what it was. And she was beat out by either more beautiful women or more talented women. But to her credit, she pivots, she directs. So, so now she's like a Bradley Cooper. She's like an Olivia Wilde, but a better version of Olivia Wilde in that she seems to have a quiet life. She's been with the same guy for 30 years, and it looks like she's just going to act here and there. The acting is going to go down and abate a little. But the directing she's going to do and in her production company, she produces movies and TV and stuff like that. And I think that's great. So I wish her the best. I think she's a, a fine woman from what I can tell. Guys, post in the comments, what's your favorite Elizabeth Banks movie? Until next time, take care. God bless. And pray.